when billions of dollars in oil are at stake. Anytime the pipes turn it to the right, we're making money. The crew of drill vessel Maersk Viking goes to any length. It's 7,000 feet deep. One wrong move means big consequences. I sit back the whole project by months, maybe years. Damn, that's it right there. Coming up! And mistakes can be fatal. Don't turn your back on that, it's going out. Any equipment that is around us can actually kill us. It's a mission to build one of the deepest oil wells on the planet. Down, 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 down. Miersk Viking is top of her class. Just two years old, she's a ship that drills for oil in seas up to 3,600 meters deep. That's twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. 150 meters to go. And her state-of-the-art drill equipment allows Miersk Viking to bore an incredible 12 kilometers into the Earth's crust. Some of the best equipment there is to work with in the drilling industry. At 31 years of age, Jesse Beck is one of the youngest drilling section leaders in the industry, and he's proud of his ship. We got the best top drive to do all the drilling, the most powerful, handle the most weight. We've got the biggest and strongest derrick of any rig anywhere in the world. Jesse and his team are working in the Gulf of Mexico. 320 kilometers south of New Orleans, Louisiana. It's one of nearly 600 American drilling operations in the Gulf and among the most promising. This oil field alone is expected to yield an estimated 6 billion barrels of oil. Maersk Viking has been working in this oil field for the past 18 months. She's already drilled and built two wells that have struck oil. The Maersk Viking is a very, very good drill ship. But it's not just a good drill ship, it's actually a fantastic ship. Alan Linda Madsen oversees all operations on the ship. He's already seen it overcome some of the worst weather that the Gulf of Mexico is famous for. And she's a very seaworthy, she's very strong, even in bad weather, she behaves fantastic. Now, Merce Viking is about to get to work on one of the deepest and most advanced oil wells of them all. More than 2,000 meters underwater. But before she can drill, Viking's crew will spend the next couple of weeks building the foundations of the well. That big operation will have three main stages. It begins with an 89 meter long steel conductor pipe that is forced into the sea floor to set a foundation. Then a second narrower tube, 975 meters long, called casing, will be stamped right through that embedded conductor pipe and extend even further into the seabed. Next, a blowout preventer connected to the ship will be placed on top of the well. It has a set of valves that can be closed in an emergency to stop potential pollution or explosions. Once she's done all this, Maersk Viking will be ready to spend the next few months drilling for oil. It's day one of the operation to build the new oil well. First task, joining each one of these pipe segments together to end up with one enormous 89 meter long conductor pipe. Each segment, roughly 14 meters long and 91 centimeters in diameter, must be hauled up from the deck by crane, then attached to the next link by a team on the drill floor. This should be completed over the next 14 hours.
Meanwhile, a second team gets to work, fitting together all the parts of a drilling assembly. It takes 180 crew members to pull off the construction of the new well. From the bridge team, outside this chart. to the engine room, to the operators on the six powerful cranes. But the crew who thrive on this ship are a special breed. Nursed Vikings drill floor is not a workplace for the faint of heart. Don't turn your back on that, it's going out. It is a very dangerous work environment. So Jesse and his crew watch each other's backs. At, at all times, our guys have to pay attention, watch every little detail, watch every piece of equipment. Once the drill assembly is fully rigged, it's attached to the end of a series of narrow pipes called the drill string. And it's come down pretty far, y'all. Then it's carefully placed inside the conductor pipe. To prevent it from rattling around and getting damaged, there are knuckles on the drill string that act as stabilizers. Now that the drilling assembly is sitting inside the conductor pipe, a running tool is attached to allow the drill string to lower the whole thing down through this. The moon pool, a gigantic hole in the middle of the ship. All right, Bobby Joe, clearing the moon pool. 25 meters long by 12 meters wide, it stretches down through the hull to the water below providing a sheltered space to lower equipment down to the sea floor. By 10.30 p.m., the first crew has finished after a grueling 12-hour shift, and a new team readies for the hard work still ahead. Knuckles on there, so it will bend up and down. Once he gives me a thumbs up that it is set, I will verify the slips are set, and then I'll let you pick up on it. The last big task for today carries the most risk, lowering the conductor into the water. Just a reminder, we're going to keep safety paramount. Anybody sees anything, hydraulics leaks, or in anything that don't look right, they'll just kill it, press the red button, and shut it all off. With the drill string suspending the conductor pipe over the moon pool, the team puts a few final touches on the running tool that connects them. Then, slowly, the conductor dips into the sea. Tomorrow morning, Maersk Viking will be on the move in preparation for a very delicate operation, more than 2,000 meters down on the ocean floor. Yeah, we're gonna move, move at 170 to half a knot. On the bridge, Viking's crew prepares to move the vessel one short kilometer to the new drill site. We're going to be moving, starting off at about 0.2 knots, um, very slow speed. Dennis Quapis runs all the marine operations. He says slow and steady counts when the ship is hauling almost 90 meters of conductor pipe below her. This conductor pipe actually becomes a pendulum below us as it moves around and we move on to location. So the main thing is we want to control that pendulum effect. Right now, the ship is in a safe zone, free of any underwater structures. But between here and the drilling site, there's a maze of equipment already set up on the seabed for other wells. Any equipment that goes subsea is extremely expensive and it's not anything that you want to damage. Coming off deck. That's where this underwater robot comes into play. It's a remotely operated vehicle, ROV for short, equipped with six onboard cameras. All right, get ready. The ROV's high intensity lights are able to pierce the darkest ocean and robotic arms can manipulate tools and do all the hands-on work required to connect or move objects thousands of meters down in the water. 
the ROP is very critical to our operation here. Without us, the Merch Viking wouldn't be able to conduct their operations. The ROV is launched overboard. It will track the underwater movements of the pipe as Viking moves into position. Yeah, we're moving now, half a knot. Mark Muldoon is senior dynamic positioning officer on the vessel. It's his job to make certain Viking arrives exactly on target. You can see the vessel here, and this is our set point here where we're going to uh, spot in for the well. As Viking crawls to her new location, the operators in the drill shack observe the underwater progress of the conductor pipe. They're watching a feed from the ROV. Yeah, Roger, that's where we're going. Which is piloted from a windowless cabin just across the drill floor. ROV copies. The key priority is the drill bit, sticking out 30 centimeters below the conductor. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, we've arrived. We're on location. Yes, sir. One hour after she set out for her very short journey, the ship is in position, poised over the site for the new oil well. Next, it's time to put the foundation of the new well in place. Come down another two feet. All right, coming down two feet. In the drill cabin, drilling section leader Jesse Beck synchronizes the operation. His team has to land the conductor pipe on a bullseye measuring less than 1.5 square meters. We're getting ready to uh, plant it in the ocean floor as soon as we get between our buoys our marker buoys. Those boys are fixed on the seabed, more than 2,200 meters underwater. We're gonna move the rig in, get us centered as best possible, and we'll stick it in the mud. That calls for an intense coordinated effort between the team on the drill floor, the ROV operator in his cabin, and the bridge crew. How about you on the bridge? Yeah, this bridge, go ahead. Let me know when you make that move. Okay, drill floor, we're gonna be going five feet at 170. Starting to move now. Up on the bridge, there's been a shift change. Vince Riley controls the precise moves of the ship. Okay, that move is complete. All right, right now we're just doing small increment moves to make sure that we're getting the casing right over the spot. Because she works in waters that are ultra deep, Maersk Viking can't drop anchor. Instead, she'll use a dynamic positioning system, a computer that analyzes onboard wind and motion sensors to hold the ship in place within one meter of her set point. And that means Vince can adjust her location by mere centimeters. Dynamic positioning relies on several thrusters located on the fore and aft sections of the ship. They are synchronized to compensate instantly for changes in wind and waves. It looks pretty centered to me, Alex. What do you think? Looks good. All right, coming down. ROV coming down. Bridge coming down. Roger The drill part has made contact with the ocean floor. It's time to begin what the drillers call spudding in, forcing the conductor pipe down through the seabed to create a backbone for the well. If it doesn't go in perfectly straight, it would be a very expensive error. If we don't get it right and we get down so far to where we can't pull this conductor back, then uh, we pretty much have to move over to the side and start over again. Waste seven or eight million dollars worth of work. At this stage, the drill bit inside the conductor pipe doesn't actually cut anything. Instead, high pressure water is forced out the sides of the jetting device, causing the bit to rotate and force the pipe down into the soft mud. This is a big milestone for us right now. After five hours of spudding, the conductor pipe is now in position, with four meters of wellhead sticking out. 
the rest of the pipe, about 85 metres, is below the sea floor. Uh, we got the doctor pipe jetted in very swiftly and very easy, without any tilt on the, uh, on the pipe. The crew leaves it to settle overnight to make sure the pressure of the mud locks it in place. A new day dawns with a fresh set of concerns. Remnants of a hurricane are making their way through the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to cause a drastic wind shift on us. The drill team is eager to stay on schedule. Next, they're supposed to release the drill from inside the conductor pipe so it can begin boring down into the Earth's crust. It's going to affect drilling operations. It'll affect us for being able to do our present operations. But as much of the crew of Maersk Viking want to push ahead, weather may force them to pull operations off the bottom and ride out the storm. On the fourth day of her operation to drill a new deep sea oil well, Maersk Viking is being rocked by the aftermath of a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. On the drill floor, the heavy seas and winds create a constant barrage of sound through 12 kilometers worth of drill pipes. All this noise is our drill pipe in the derrick rattling. We call it our wind chimes. And when you hear all these wind chimes going off, that means the seas are very rough. These rough conditions will make it more of a challenge for the drill team to move ahead with construction of the new oil well. But Merce Viking has her limits. If things get much worse, they'll have no choice but to shut down. Even if that decision costs the client a million dollars a day. After waiting out the wind for a couple of hours, the team confirms it's safe to move ahead. The wind is let down considerably now. So now the drill team can move on to the next task, which requires them to bore even further into the seabed to make room for the next section of the well. This part of the operation begins inside the conductor pipe, more than 2,300 meters below the surface, when the drill bit is released to tunnel down through the ocean floor. A jetting tool above the bit uses a mixture of water and clay to force cuttings up and out of the top of the pipe. Yeah, go ahead. Meanwhile, up on the bridge, dynamic positioning operator Wojciech Stelmarszek and Dennis Kwapis react to another shift in the wind and seas. Rig floor bridge. Okay, we start our heading change. The bridge needs to adjust Viking's placement over the drill site. Those heavy seas and winds of 56 kilometers per hour are now hitting the vessel broadside. The six thrusters are working overtime just to maintain the vessel's position. If we lost one thruster, the situation could become critical where uh, it may affect our actual positioning over the well as they're drilling. Yeah, you copy, we start our heading change to starboard 20 degrees first. The trick is to slightly twist and position the ship so her bow takes the seas head on, minimizing movement on the drill floor. Viking's thrusters allow her to rotate up to 360 degrees around the drill string, as if she were on a giant turntable. Okay, Capo, uh, we complete our heading change. Uh, new heading is 165. The drill has now reached a total depth of 3,185 meters, measured from the onboard rotary table, through the water, and down into the sea floor. A combination of water and clay is pumped into the hole to displace the seawater and force out the cuttings. This also keeps the borehole open. Once boring is done, the bit is pulled back out of the drill hole, a process that takes five hours. 
And there's the bit. At this point, Merced Viking will creep back and reposition one kilometer to the safe zone, carrying that drill string below her. When she's back in the safe zone, the entire jetting assembly and drill are retrieved from the depths. Pulled out of the moon pool, hosed down, and pulled up to the drill floor for inspection. All greased up and ready? Yeah. Before the next phase of operations, offshore installation manager Alan Linda Madsen conducts a thorough inspection of all the emergency and backup systems. The most important part of my job, that is to ensure that the rig is safe and also that we don't have any kind of spills or negative impact on the environment. An oil spill would be a catastrophe. Emergency shutdown panel, all is good. Something always turns up during an inspection. We have no idea where they came from. In this case, it's a seemingly unimportant pin. But think about it falling down there. What is that? 50 feet, 60 feet? That can actually hurt a person. These are the little things we look for. The little things that actually mean so much in our safety world. That safety concern extends to the crew. Maersk Viking has gone as long as five and a half months without anyone on board getting so much as a scratch. Any equipment that is around us can actually kill us, basically. Uh, one of our sister rigs, not a Maersk rig, but another company, same rig, same design, same setup as this, had a guy get killed about three weeks ago, so... It was the first offshore death in the Gulf of Mexico in more than a year, but it's made every crew member that much more vigilant. It's 9.30 at night. Work on the drill floor doesn't stop just because the skies are dark. This day is very rough today. The things are moving. So, obviously, any time you pick up something, but the drill team still has to assemble a new set of piping. Two days from now, they're scheduled to insert this narrower 56 centimeter pipe through the conductor pipe foundation, then embed it almost 1,000 meters into the ocean floor. Just one pipe length weighs in at about 4,540 kilograms. Everything is heavy here, so that is one of the main challenges. And there are 77 lengths of pipe in total to be assembled. So the work is repetitive and prolonged. Day seven, only one third of the pipe remains to be assembled. More than 600 meters of it is already hanging in the ocean below Maersk Viking. Drilling section leader Jesse Beck gives the last lengths of pipe a final once over. Well, right now I'm just inspecting this part of the uh, 22 inch wellhead. This right here will actually uh, stab into the 36 inch wellhead and essentially lock our new wellhead in. So, uh, yeah, just make sure all that's good. Once all 975 meters of pipe are fully assembled and hanging under the ship, Viking will reposition once again to the well site for installation. Essentially, this is another building block of the, of the start of this well. But one member of the crew won't be on board for this part of the mission. The chopper's 20 minutes out. It's an isolated life out here on the ship, where crew members work four weeks straight, then take a four-week break. My relief, he's on his way in. It's always a great thing to see him. Marine section leader Dennis Quapis is happy to be leaving on the hour-and-a-half helicopter ride home to his family. It's been a great hitch. Can't wait to do it again. Meanwhile, the crew who remain 
the counting down to a very complex maneuver. Merce Viking is on day eight of construction for an ultra deep sea oil well in the Gulf of Mexico. She's creeping at 0.1 knots into position over the wellhead. A casing pipe almost a thousand meters long is dangling below her. Tell Devin and them I'll be making up on this one, please. That adds another level of caution to the next step in the operation. It's time to stab the 56 centimeter casing pipe through the 91 centimeter conductor pipe, then embed it almost a thousand meters into the ocean floor. It's like threading a needle more than 2,000 meters below the ship. We definitely don't want to hit the 36 inch wellhead and damage anything before we even get the 22 in it. This is when the six cameras aboard the Vikings ROV will really prove their value to the mission. 7,000 feet above the wellhead is kind of difficult. So, uh, yeah, we, we'll get ROV to guide us. There, there'll be our eyes down there. At this point, the bridge has maneuvered Viking into position above the wellhead. The 56 centimeter pipe hanging below her is just 52 meters above the sea floor. Hey, ROV. Bridge, ROV. Follow us down. I want to get about five feet above the wellhead, and then you can uh, discuss with the bridge to get us exactly lined up. Yeah, roger right that. From his perch in the drill shack, Jesse coordinates between pilot Randall Roy, who is working inside the ROV cabin on the main deck. Yeah, that's where we're going. The drill team that is moving the last few pipe lengths below the ship. And Bobby Joe Green, the operator who finesses the pipe movements underwater. Right, let me get y'all to come to a stop. We're gonna back off and uh, try to get the, uh, the top of the well in view. All right, we're all stopped, Randall. Now the pipe is within striking distance of the wellhead. What, what are we, about two feet up, foot and a half, something like that? Off the whale, yeah. only about a foot, maybe. Okay, cool. Yeah, come up and look in the hole, and we'll stab it this time, I think. Right. Half a meter, 195. Starting the move. As the drill team moves in for the stab. ROV bridge, one meter, 325. Dynamic positioning operator Vince Riley shifts the massive 228-meter-long drill ship ever so slightly. We're making very small, precise movements making moves uh, four meters, one meter, at speeds of anywhere from half a knot to even 0.1 knot. Look pretty good to you, Randall. Yeah, it's just swinging back and forth. Uh... Yeah, it looks like we'll have to get it on that swing. Yeah. The underwater dance continues for eight agonizing minutes as the 975 meter long casing pipe sways tantalizingly close to its target. And I need that still I need it. Oh. Just when it appears the pipe will slide right in, the casing gets caught up on the lip of the wellhead. So I'm gonna ride on the length rim. Yes, yeah, so I'm rubbing on the back side. Hey Randall. Yes, sir. Did y'all give it a little nudge? Jesse gives the go-ahead to prod the pipe gently with one of the ROV's robotic arms. Hi, Bob Joe, it may come in. It may come in this time. Stop, stop, stop. There it is, down. Down, 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 down. There you wow. go. All right, we're in. Good job, Bobby Joe. Now that they've pulled off the stabbing, the next step is to bond the two pipes together. 400 tons of cement are pumped down the interior pipe, first filling the bottom, then shooting up the sides to fill the gap between the interior pipe and the conductor. Once set, this glues the two pipes together. There's no such thing as quiet time on Merced Viking. Something's always cooking. The 180 men and women aboard this ship work hard 
and they expect to eat heartily. In a typical month, the galley serves up to 250 kilograms of French fries, 900 kilograms of chicken, and 380 liters of ice cream. As if their work wasn't tough enough, some members of the crew, like Jonathan Melson, choose to burn off calories from those generous meals with a round of weights in the gym. That's the line of work that we do. We gotta have, you know, be in shape to keep working. That strength training is about to prove its worth as the drill team readies to install the blowout preventer. Weighing in at nearly 500 tons, it's designed to prevent the uncontrolled eruption of flammable oil and gas. In the event of a blowout, the valves on the BOP kick in and seal off the well before the oil and gas can reach the ship. Sheldon, are we good? Once Merce Viking starts drilling for oil, the BOP is the last barrier that stands between the ship and a fatal explosion. Start the blue pod function test from the rig floor, please. Subsea supervisor Mick Hall and his crew are testing the blowout preventer systems using an environmentally safe fluid. Upper plate run. Closing. All valves pressure tested to full, full uh, pressure. And the function test scored well as well. Within the next two days, the blowout preventer will be lowered through Viking's moon pool and locked onto the wellhead on the ocean floor. It will be connected to the sea surface and the ship by steel tubes known as risers. At the start of day nine of their mission, Maersk Viking is back in the safe zone. Where's the roughness? Hey. The drill team prepares to move the blowout preventer over to the moon pool. Everything has been leading up to this. When we do, okay, now we don't want everybody shouting directions and things like that. The only time is everybody and anybody can shout stop. Mick Hall gives a last minute safety briefing to his crew. If you feel you need to stop the job, we stop the job, right? and we'll come and we'll look at what the issue is and we'll fix it. OK, all right, guys, uh, everybody knows what they're doing. Let's get on with it. The first step is for the crane to lift the huge blowout preventer so it can be loaded onto a transporter, which in turn will move it into position above the moon pool. Ready? We're doing our ready. Roger there. We're coming up! You're good level wise! Keep it going, good job. It's going good, nice and slow, nice and steady, that's what I like. We're not here, we're not here to win any races. Uh, everybody's kind of tense right now because it is a heavy lift and uh, any slight movement at all will make that 983,000 pound shift, which will do a lot of damage. If the wellhead or BOP is damaged at any point during the maneuver, the crew could be forced to start again, building the entire well from scratch. Millions of dollars of time and equipment are at stake. It's day nine. Stage one of the most critical moves of Merce Viking's mission has just begun. Pick your point for your level. Until it gets lower, then I can help you. Mick Hall is directing the blowout preventer to a transporter cradle. It's en route to the moon pool. And then a voyage to the bottom of the sea, where it will be installed on the wellhead. OK, ease it down. Down. Shifting the nearly 500 ton BOP is painstaking. All stop. What's that? Your point gap on this side. And you're rubbing over there. The fit isn't quite right, 
so it has to be repositioned to make the 25 millimeters of clearance. Yeah. Looking good, Matt. Keep it up. Looking good. All stop. All stop. Now that it's firmly in place in the transporter, the next challenge is to move the BOP over on rails to the moon pool. Every loose cable must be accounted for and fastened. These three black cables right here is what essentially runs that BOP. So we got to make sure we don't nick them at all. This blowout preventer is the last safety measure that can protect the ship and her crew from a catastrophic blowout when they start drilling for oil. Hi, buddy. What's up? Oh, how's it going? Good. That's to slide it up under the uh, riser. Right. Tell, tell Wilson to pull back on the dugger. The BOP is now poised over the moon pool. Meanwhile, the drill team has begun assembling a structure called the riser pipe. When the well is completed, the riser will connect Merce Viking to the blowout preventer sitting on the wellhead. Each of the riser sections is 27 meters long and weighs about 34,000 kilograms. The last sensitive move is to attach the riser to the blowout preventer. Okay, ease it down. Ease it down. The combined worth of the BOP and riser is $80 million. That's the cost of a brand new freighter. So an incremental move like this can't be rushed. It's a very delicate operation to get the pins stabbed, so we don't damage seals, we don't damage pins. It's not just the value of the BOP. Mick wants to make sure his crew gets through this crucial step safely. Guys can get hands trapped. That's why it's, uh, communications is imperative at this point. Nothing happens without my say so. All stop, all stop. Finally, the BOP and Riser are splashed through the moon pool. It will take 48 hours for the remaining riser to be added and lowered. When it's completed, the combined riser and BOP will measure in at more than 2,200 meters and hang directly below the ship. Day 11 of Maersk Viking's mission dawns under grey skies. It's been three days since the operation to install the blowout preventer began. Now, a fast-moving cold front is blowing through the Gulf of Mexico. Although the ship has moved to within 150 meters of the wellhead position, the BOP installation is on hold. Viking is built to handle the predicted 45 knots of wind. But a cautious Alan Linda Madsen sees no reason to push her limits. We rather wait these uh, two or three hours and then do it right from the start. Finally, by the evening, the worst of the storm front has passed through. The ship's ROV is launched in anticipation of the risky move to land the BOP on the wellhead. Because the move is so complicated, a second ROV launched from the nearby supply ship will also monitor the installation. So 130, 104. On Vikings Bridge, dynamic positioning officers Jessica Chernik and Wojciech Stelmaszczyk work in sync to precisely maneuver the ship. Yeah, they said they wanted to start making the move to 20 meters off the wildhead, right? OK. 
Okay. Sea installer, Merce Viking Bridge. We're going to be working in conjunction with the drill floor and also with the ROV to be uh, moving the vessel towards the wellhead, making sure that we, you know, don't hit anything on the way there. ROV drill floor, this is the bridge. It's not only the BOP and Riser at risk. The crew has to keep a sharp lookout for the web of infrastructure already laid out on the ocean floor. It is not just our own equipment that we risk to damage. This could also be these multi-million dollar installations down here, and that will set back the whole project by months, maybe years. Because this is the final critical step, Mick Hall and Jesse Beck rally their team again for a breakdown of the move. I'll be at the ROV, I'll be telling the bridge whatever moves to make, jinx, unless you hear my voice, don't move. Jesse is the eyes for Graham Jenkins, known as Jinx, who controls the BOP via instruments only. On the landing mode stuff set up, Jinx. Video from the ROV shows that a strong current is causing the BOP to sway slightly. That creates more of a challenge to land it on the wellhead. It may take a little time to, to get it to settle down, to get it latched up. I don't know, but we don't want to make any mistakes. So everybody just be quiet. Jinx, don't move until I tell you to, and uh, we'll get it latched up. As the blowout preventer begins its final descent towards the wellhead, Jesse heads to the ROV cabin. All right, let's come down uh, about 10 feet. OK, coming down. If Jess's team is even slightly off the mark, that one wrong move could smash the BOP right into the wellhead. So close. Taking a chance of running that wellhead is a, uh, it makes it a very tense Jesse, moment. So you just have to let these guys do their job and make the right call at the right moment. Just then, the BOP starts to swing away in the current. All stop. Jesse needs to time the next move so the swing back happens at the very moment when the wellhead is directly aligned. Jinx, get ready. With the BOP so close, Jesse calls for a tiny shift in the ship's position. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I need to go a foot at 37 degrees. No, One foot, yeah, zero, four. three, seven. Copy. Zero, three, seven? Yeah. Damn, that's it right there. On the move. Roger that. It's lined up on the right there. James, come down. Damn, come down. See it? Yeah. She's down. All right, Jinx, go to your 100K down and we'll latch it. Copy. Good job, everybody. Everyone, from the ROV shack to the bridge, to the drill floor cabin can now relax. The BOP has finally been landed. Huh, relieved. We didn't destroy anything or tear anything up. It was good landing. Everything went well. Now it's time to look ahead to the ultimate goal, tapping into that giant reservoir deep down in the oil field. This new drill bit made with synthetic diamond cutters, will start boring through the Earth's crust in search of the oil. Jesse expects to hit the reservoir in 10 to 12 weeks. Uh, anytime the pipes turn into the right, we're making money, so of course uh, I'm always happy. And Alan Linda Madsen can be confident of a job well done. Absolutely perfect and very good performance of the crew. No damages, no nothing, efficiently, safe and, and good. And uh, the guys around the ship are happy. Now we are doing what we like to do, drill holes in the soil, and uh, it goes very good indeed. 
For this mighty ship, it has truly been a voyage to the bottom of the sea. <laughs>